HRD is good to know. So, remember HRD, three main goals, performance, learning, and change. This is good in performance. They're really doing that. They're teaching you how to perform. Dress well, look straight in the eye, write a good resume, uh, wear certain kinds of clothes and shoes, and get a job. Okay, so this is reproduction of the dominant culture. And they're told to assimilate, be like them. Just disappear into nothingness and be like them. The mainstream. This is Phyllis Cunningham's RIP, NIU professor, said this is one way of social control. All of you fit in, just like everyone else. And you are others, and you're powerless. Okay, just fit in. Okay, and you're done. That's the deficit model. I'm kind of putting harsh words. <clears throat> in essence, not to get the picture. Uh, since you know nothing, you need to acquire new knowledge, skills, and attitudes <laughs> so that you can be part of your society and get a job. Okay? You are not co-producer of knowledge, you're not co-learner, you're just passive recipient of knowledge. So go get a job in the factory. Okay, so these are what they teach them. And therefore refugees are marginalized. They're cultural outsiders. Okay, you have the mainstream culture and then the cultural outsiders. And therefore the cultural insiders, the refugee providers are the powerful, power holders. Remember me using Michel Foucault, knowledge is not neutral. It's power. If you have power, you control what is right and wrong. That's why there's a fight for knowledge, all TV station, Fox News versus MSNBC and PBS, all of them have their version of what truth is. And then refugees, who, who can speak English well, like the sun, becomes powerful. He's the mediator between two worlds, the in-group and the out-group. He's kind of in between. And you get assimilated. So that's model one of refugee service. And the model two of refugee service will be the human rights-based approach. This is Maria. Uh, this is one volunteer. Uh, she still continues her work. She was with AmeriCorps initially. And this is in one of the food banks in Indianapolis. Okay, so this is the Karen farm with Maria. And so exactly, that's a good point. Like farm, right, agriculture, that's where they belong. We had an interview, many were formerly farmers. So they have skills. It's not that they're done. Like, okay, factory farming, like feudal and capitalist and industrial, like they're different worlds. It's a big leap. Maybe they still belong to the feudal land area instead of the capitalist industrial place. So slow down. Okay. So this is now saying the alternative approaches, it's not just one way of doing things. Post-structuralism, there are many ways of doing things. And the biases are human rights based and culturally sensitive. You don't just impose one model. Okay, so we have to find out the actual conditions, the context within which the refugees live. Sure, they need to be gainfully employed, true. But maybe we can empower them to. These are actual fields where they were planting. Uh, very nicely, uh, some pieces of land were provided by European American landowners. Say, sure, you want farming? Fine, come. I have a big tract of land. Do you want to use this? So the Karen refugees planted their own vegetables. And uh, so they're empowered. They said, this is what we want. And we want to plant the food that we eat, like a bitter gourd and Thai basil. We call them Thai basil, but they're all over me in Southeast Asia. It's different from the Italian basil. <clears throat> and so on. They, they, they grow their own veggies. So they say, we're, they're so happy they can plant their own crops and make money out of it too. So you're now questioning, training is not neutral. There's some biases. Are you saying, should we put social justice into training? So the waterman provided some land for agriculture and some families chose to get involved uh, here. So they were planting. So they have the string beans, uh, bitter gourd, 
high base hill where some of the things that they uh, plant. Okay, so, but they say, how can they be accountable? Well, individuals have to decide, the current want to be involved in the farm project. They're the ones who said, we want to do this. It was not imposed on them. And the, the landowner said, yeah, sure, please use this track of land. And then Maria's Refugee Service uh, Institute was also involved. Okay, they work together and they say, okay, we have an agreement. And they have different ways of farming. Uh, uh, the watermen were saying, why are you going out in the field when it's raining? And I was thinking that, but it was, when I was small, that was fun time to go out and, and be in the rain. I was playing in the rain myself. Like, why didn't they get it? Yeah, because it's different culture here. They expect you not to go out farming when it's raining. But the currents were happy, like me when I was a little boy, outside and playing with the rain and farming in the rain. I said, and then they had to sit down and say, look, you're good, you're being, you know, helpful, but this is how they farm. When it's raining, it's a great time to farm. See, even basic things we don't think and assume. So it's bottom up. You ask the people what they want instead of telling them what they want. Okay, uh, I think he's an uh, Eritrean, I think, uh, a refugee too. Uh, they're not empty vessels, but they're partners in the project uh, that you're implementing. So there's a difference between assimilation and integration. Well, it's very complex, I'll just simplify it. Assimilation is we look and talk and act and eat like the dominant culture. Integration is, yeah, sure, we're part of it, but we're not like them. But we are involved in the bigger picture. It's the same as the image of the melting pot and salad bowl. You still keep your own identity in the salad bowl. Okay, so you have the current families here planting their crops. And then you have the weaving project. Okay, that's a farming project. And here, uh, some current said, we want to weave our textile. Okay, this is our cloth. And and so we cannot find them here. You have to buy them from Burma, from Myanmar. So Maria thought of a project, and you have to apply for a grant. Department of Agriculture was one. If you're more open-minded, you can say culturally sensitive. It's not just planting, but it revolves around agriculture. On the side, while you are waiting for the harvest, um, some people will do weaving. And I kept on asking, uh, who are involved in weaving? said, so, okay, are they all women? But is there a man? I, I was so insistent, stubbornly asking to say, no, not a single man is involved in weaving. I said, okay, okay. I just want to make sure you were not stereotyping and making sure maybe some men want to do it. They said, not one single man wanted to do weaving. I said, okay, now I find out. So it's a project for women. Uh, and they said, great, chill, and I chill, okay. So there's some alternative, but complementary project. Some people will still continue working in the factories, but then maybe others would say we want to, on the side, plant vegetables and be gainfully employed, and also some would say we'll be involved in weaving. And this is a gender-sensitive approach, asking not just the refugees, but a certain sector, a big chunk, women, what else do you want aside from uh, agriculture? Two minutes. And then they meet regularly, and Maria got looms imported them from Southeast Asia, came here. Okay, so I'll just skip these. Conclusion, this is Mr. Waterman They're showing there's, they're, they're opening this land. Well, this is the model that we came up with. We have time for two minutes. In summary, we are well-meaning, we care about refugees. Okay, the mainstream, service providers are doing good things, but they're not sufficient. Necessary, but not sufficient. And specifically, women's concerns are not met. And therefore, the dominant approach is really, you know, you can see it. Now, so based on our grounded model, we say maybe we need a different approach. We're not rejecting the mainstream, but we're saying you need, in addition to the mainstream approach, you must have alternatives too. Instead of the refugees being disembodied, you listen to the authentic voice of the refugees. Instead of assimilation, integration. And refugees are not. <coughs> uh, some might be lawyers before they came. 
some of you have stayed in refugee camps for a long time, okay? And we need culturally appropriate approach and human rights-based approach to uh, refugee services. That's, there's more typologies. Thank you.